Welcome to the biomechanical analysis of a maximal velocity inside of the foot soccer kick. Kicking is one of the most studied skills in soccer. There are several kicking variations, each involving altered kinematics that are based on the desired ball flight characteristics. A maximal velocity instep kick is the most commonly studied kicking movement. However, this movement is not the most commonly used. Passing movements are a lot more common in the sport. Additionally, a similar passing motion is often used for shooting on target, especially during penalty kicks as seen in this video. A maximal velocity inside of the foot shot can be characterized as follows. Now to start, a uh, run up of about two to four steps is usually used uh, in this type of kick. It's been shown in studies um, that involve a maximal velocity in-step kick that this uh, approach creates a maximal velocity. Um, and it's really going to be no different for this type of kick. Um, now the angle of approach is what's going to be different. Uh, usually a angle of approach of about 0 to 45 degrees from the line of target is going to be used. Now this angle can be highly variable because the kicking foot can be adjusted depending on the intended direction of the shot. Now, for the purpose of this analysis, a small angle of approach of approximately 0 to 15 degrees will be used as the participant was instructed to aim for the right side of the goal. Thus, we know where the intended direction of the shot is going, so we can um, narrow this angle down to exactly what we want. Now, the next characteristic of the shot is going to be the placement of the plant leg. In this situation we want the plant leg to land slightly behind the ball and to the side of the ball. Uh, next, a posterior leg motion about the transverse axis and external rotation of the hip about the vertical axis is going to partially describe the motion of the backswing. Next, a deceleration of that posterior leg motion and external rotation will, re will occur during that backswing, followed by a transition to forward motion of the thigh and shank segment with a flexed knee. Um, following that, a deceleration of the thigh segment and acceleration of the shank segment through knee extension will occur. Next, a continuation of forward motion at the hip with a fully extended knee upon follow through and lastly a reflexing of the knee as the follow through progresses. So now that we've described the kinematics of the kick I will be discussing the proposed technique or what I will be looking for in the analysis. The most effective technique for a maximal velocity inside of the foot soccer kick would involve a run up in a straight line with or at a slight angle of approximately 0 to 15 degrees. Now many players will use different run ups to disguise their passer shot, however this is beyond the scope of this analysis. The run up should consist though of approximately 3 to 4 steps and the plant foot should land slightly behind the ball to allow for greater knee extension and range of motion of the kicking leg. The backswing should result in a position of hip extension and external rotation, also knee flexion and a shank segment that is roughly parallel or slightly beyond parallel with the ground. The forward swing phase should contain a proximal to distal sequential movement pattern that results in hip flexion, knee extension, and a greater degree of external rotation. Additionally, the ankle should be in abduction and dorsiflexion. The ball should be contacted on the inside of the foot as close to the ankle as possible. Now, this is going to allow for less foot deformation. This would in turn result in a greater coefficient of restitution, thus leading to greater ball, ball velocity. The follow through should be in the direction of the pass or shot with the thigh shank segment following in a parabolic and counterclockwise arc. Now before we begin the uh, analysis of this skill, it's important to keep in mind the goal or what we're trying to achieve here. Now there are several purposes of the maximal velocity inside of the foot kick, uh, perhaps the most noticeable of which is during penalty kicks. 
However, they are also using gameplay to make long passes, crosses, and also to take shots on goal. In order to maximize the effectiveness of these gameplay variables, accuracy and velocity of the ball must be increased. Accuracy can be enhanced through biomechanical consistency, usually obtained through practice. Now, velocity, on the other hand, can be increased by achieving greater foot velocity at impact and increasing the coefficient of restitution. Also, increasing the leg and foot mass helps, but that isn't really going to be a factor in this. We can't really do much about that. So we're primarily focusing here on increasing the foot velocity at impact and also increasing that coefficient of restitution. So let's go ahead and begin this evaluation with the approach. The approach appears to be within the optimal step range with a run up of about four steps in an angle within that zero to 15 degree range we were looking for. Now don't get confused about the angle because it appears that the angle is more like 45 degrees when looking straight on, but remember that the participant is aiming for the right side of the goal. So the angle is actually more or less straight on. This all looks pretty good. However, for a maximal velocity shot, the run-up appears to be just a little slow and lacking some intensity, particularly in that final step before contact with the ball. So next, let's go ahead and take a look at foot placement. If you notice from this view, you'll notice that the foot is in line with the direction of the target. It's facing off to that right-hand side and it's placed slightly behind the ball. Now this isn't the best angle to see that placement behind the ball, but we'll see that here in a second. So here you can see that foot is placed slightly behind the ball. Um, this is exactly where we want that foot to be placed because this is going to allow that full extension of the knee to occur before ball contact enhancing that foot velocity and giving us more power on that ball. Here you can see that that knee is almost fully extended slightly before that ball contact. Next let's go ahead and look at the backswing phase of the motion. If we pause the frame right here what you'll notice is that at maximal hip extension and knee flexion uh, it's, it, the range of motion appears somewhat limited here. Now remember we want to create that whip-like motion so if we limit that range of hip extension and knee flexion we're going to limit the amount of power we can create. Now coming up here you'll see a picture of me performing the exact same kick and what you'll notice is that we've reached a greater degree of hip extension and knee flexion and this is going to allow for that greater whip-like motion and hence more power development. Here you'll see the video and you can see there's just a little bit more zip on that pass. So once we finish that back swing, obviously we're going to have the forward swing. This forward swing phase should contain a proximal to distal sequential movement pattern that results in hip flexion, knee extension, and a greater degree of external rotation. I've gone ahead and broken this down into a frame by frame shot. Unfortunately I can't get enough frames per second to see every detail but it'll have to do. But what you can see is that that whip like motion you can see the the hip initiating the action and then the knee following subsequently with knee extension. Although that whip like motion is clearly evident in the pictures and in the video it is not quite to the extent that it could be. Now let's go ahead and look at the point of contact with the ball. Now remember there are two things we are looking to maximize, foot velocity and the coefficient of restitution. We already looked at optimizing foot speed in the swing phases, so now we are looking at creating a solid contact with the ball. From this view there appears to be good knee and hip extension, however the ankle appears to be in plantar flexion. Greater dorsiflexion and external rotation at the hip appear to be needed to achieve greater power and accuracy. Notice how the shoulders are facing to the right of the target. This indicates that there is a lack of external rotation at the hip occurring. Therefore, the athlete needs to compensate by turning the upper body. Additionally, you can see that the toes are not pointed up. The ankle appears to be in plantar flexion as opposed to dorsal flexion. 
again, this will decrease that coefficient of restitution as it will allow for greater foot deformation to occur at impact. Next, let's look at the follow through of the motion. Remember that in the follow through, we want that thigh shank segment to follow in a parabolic arc in the counterclockwise direction. If you notice, the thigh shank segment does follow this counterclockwise parabolic arc, and the point of this is to prepare for landing in that in that next step. And also, it is a result of the structural limitations of the hip capsule itself. And lastly, we're going to look at timing of the movement. Now, when this movement timing appears correct, but remember, a greater whip-like motion could be achieved through a larger approach step and a larger backswing accomplished through greater hip extension and knee flexion. The larger step would result in a longer swing phase and a greater subsequent foot velocity. In conclusion, we're just going to go ahead and end with some instruction to give the athlete to help increase performance. First, the athlete should focus on a faster speed of approach and taking a larger final step before ball contact. This will allow for a deceleration of the body to occur, thus allowing the kicking leg a greater time to accelerate through a full range of motion. This will serve to enhance that maximal final velocity of the foot at the time of impact. Secondly, the athlete should try to increase the degree of hip extension and knee flexion during the backswing phase of the motion. Doing this will help to increase the amount of range of motion and the time that that, that that thigh shank segment has to accelerate through a full range of motion, thus increasing the final velocity of the foot at impact. Next, the athlete needs to make sure that he points his shoulders in the direction of the shot. Furthermore, he should try to increase the amount of external rotation of the thigh shank segment about the vertical axis during the forward swing phase. Right now there appears to be a compensatory lack of external rotation and that appears to be a result of not getting the shoulders facing the direction of the target. And lastly, when we get to that point of ball contact, we need to make sure that the ankle is not in plantar flexion. Point the toes up and out to create that dorsiflexion and also make sure that the ankle is locked and rigid. This will help increase that coefficient of restitution, thus giving us greater power in that final shot.